Okay, time now to hear about predictive analytics from Bernard Alley, who is the manager of collection strategy and analytics at Bay Corp New Zealand. So please join with me in welcoming Bernard Alley to the stage. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Pleasure to be here this morning. My name is Bernard Ali, and I look after the collection strategy and analytics function at Baycorp. So I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what your perception would have been of the person that uh, at Baycorp that looks after collection strategy and collections performance. But I can tell you this: I'm glad I'm not the one that has to go and knock on customer doors to collect any money. Now, don't get me wrong, we still have collectors and field-based agents around New Zealand, and um, we've got a couple of sites in, in Australia, in Sydney and, uh, and Perth, and our most recent site uh, in Manila, Philippines, has just had its one-year anniversary. But something else that has changed quite significantly over the last few years at Baycorp is that we have a lot more of these guys. The contemporary term for them is data scientists, and these guys are fundamentally changing the way that we do business in what is the, uh, one, of the most, uh, one of the oldest industries around. And this is what I'm here to talk about. At Baycorp, we're at the start of a journey to ingrain predictive analytics and decision science into our business. We're looking to partner with global players, global leaders in this field, to ensure that we deliver a solution that is best in class, it can optimize our collection performance, and most importantly, it can predict behavior or deal with customer insights that we may not even know about just yet. At Baycorp, we have decades of customer information. On average, our customers have more than three linked cases, which means that when a client gives us a debt to collect, we actually know more about that customer than the information that our client gives us. We have in our databases millions of phone records, addresses, and specific customer interaction information, which means that we, we are already starting to build a pretty clear picture of the customer as he comes to us. Now you take that information and you add to that um, the millions of credit bureau information records that are available out there. You take all of that data and you add to that information demographic data, like for example the customer's age the gender, the location, the suburb that he lives in, and all of a sudden you've got a, a much clearer picture of that customer than when he first got the account in from the client. As it's quite possible that we've seen that particular customer before, and if we haven't seen him, we've certainly seen someone like him, or a group of people that behave like him. We view this, this uh, intelligence in a business as a scientific process. But what I've just said, you know, taking all of that data down and filtering it right down to the next action on one particular case is actually much easier said than done. Traditionally, collections in a company like Baycorp and other collection agencies has been a bit of an art. You've got a collections manager who deals with, you know, a bit of gut feel and tuition. And at Baycorp, we've got the experience to be able to make those calls, and more often than not, we get that right. However, this approach has limitations. As humans, we can deal with one, two, three, four, maybe five variables at one time. But that's about the limit of our, of our capability as humans. Then what do you do when your strategist or your collections manager leaves? How do you train the next guy that comes in? How do you train them on intuition? You can't. So we expect our predictive analytics engine to use more than 400, not five, but more than 400 data variables to be able to predict what the customer is going to do next. We expect our engine to use algorithms that becomes quite dynamic and it learns every time we interact with the customer. We expect our decisions and our, and our models to constantly be changing and, be, and predicting future behavior, which is as accurate as you can be at that time of interaction. And this is the main reason, guys, that I choose to have more mathematicians and data scientists in my team than I've got traditional collection, collection strategists. We expect our solution to, to look through millions of records on any customer set, 
pick out the variables that are significant and use that information to increase the probability of future success of any given action or any given campaign, letter campaigns and phone campaigns. We want our solution to be able to run test and learn or champion challenger exercises so you have a control group and then you can make sure that the, the, uh, the treatment that you're giving a particular group of customers is actually working because it's different or, or better than the control group. The idea essentially is that before every activity that we take, we evaluate our chances of success on that particular activity. Where there is, where there is little chance of success or no chance of success, we cancel that action or we defer that action or we choose a different action for that particular customer. In practice, this means that before every phone campaign, you evaluate and firstly see if phone campaigns are the best thing for that customer. He may choose to, to respond more to a SMS, for example, so you don't do the phone campaign. If your algorithm suggests that the phone campaign is the best way to go, you, you rank your, your, your accounts so that your, your most successful or your most likely to pay account is the very top of your campaign. If the algorithm suggests that letters are the best way to go, again, you rank your letter and you give every, every customer a probability of success. And where the chances of success become lower than the cost of that activity, you stop your campaign, you don't send any more letters out. So that's the sort of thing that I think, you know, traditionally we would have thought predictive analytics and algorithms would predict. But I want you to think about something a little bit different, something a little bit more out of the box. So at Bakel, we take millions we make and take millions of phone calls in a year. Now imagine if we could listen to those million phone calls in a few minutes and pick out the key words and phrases that our customers are saying and use those key words and phrases to predict whether or not that guy's going to make a payment. And if we think that guy's not going to make a payment, maybe send him a reminder, just as an example. And if we think that he is going to make a payment, uh, let him make a payment on the day that, that, that the account is due. Now that in itself is, I think, quite powerful, the, the, the ability to do that. But let's flip that around, and instead of listening to the customer, let's listen to our own staff members. What are the words that our staff members are saying that are leading to customers paying? Because if we can pick out the key words or phrases that our team members are saying, and those keywords and phrases are leading to more and more customers paying, in theory we could put those keywords and, and phrases together and create a call script or a call guide which has the greatest mathematical chance of obtaining payment. Now that I think is really powerful. Now, will the time, the effort, the considerable cost to implement something like this into your business and to use predictive analytics to predict your next activity, is it going to be worthwhile? Well, at Baycorp, we have very strong organisational buy-in for the use of predictive analytics. It's the next step, we believe, in unlocking the latent value that lies in our unique databases. We have quite high expectations around, around accuracy. Our business runs pretty much on commission, and so it is quite cost-sensitive. But let's face it, if I send an extra letter out to a customer or make an extra phone call, it's not going to upset too many people. And that could be the same for many of your industries. But there'll be other industries, you know, the medical field for example, and you're trying to predict um, customer throughput, um, patient throughput I should say. Um, if, um, you know, if the industry requires, your, your requirements for, uh, for accuracy could be, could be a lot stricter. But at the end of the day, what I am talking about is probability. All you're trying to do is tip the scales in your favour. And that's what we're trying to do at Bakel. We don't have a crystal ball and we never will. We don't know exactly who will pay and who won't. What we will have, however, is a tool that will help tip the scales in our favour. So over the last year, we've begun a journey. We've sold the idea to our executive team and, and our shareholders. And we've tried to find a suitable player to partner with us to help us through this journey. Some of these names will be familiar to, to some of you, but they're not household names in New Zealand, so I'll just tell you quickly about who they are. FICO is a company in the, um, in the US. They're listed on the New York Stock Exchange. These guys have sold 100 billion credit scores in their time. This makes them the most used credit score in the world. Experian is listed on the uh, London Stock Exchange. They have over 16,000 employees worldwide and, um, and they are they're specialists in credit risk and, uh, and scoring. SAS is a privately held organisation 
And these guys um, have uh, over 13,000 employees worldwide. 93% of the top 100 Fortune 500 companies are SaaS clients. So it just gives you, gives you an idea of some of, the, some of the companies that we're dealing with in terms of our journey through, through the predictive analytics into our business. As, um, as we've been engaging with these companies over the last few months, it's been fascinating listening to some of the applications that other clients of these guys are using predictive anal analytics for. There's the traditional stuff, but perhaps the most, the most interesting one I remember is a supermarket in Australia that is using predictive analytics and customer loyalty card information to manage their stock levels, particularly in the cases of you know, produce, which doesn't have a long shelf life. These guys are predicting who's going to come into which supermarket and buy which product on which day so they can stock up to make sure that they've got adequate stock in their business to, um, to cater for their customer needs. I think that's pretty cool. Now, what they've also done is taken a look at their CCTV footage mathematically and analysed the path that those group of customers is going to take throughout the shop so that they can maximise their marketing exposure, every marketing dollar, to those, group of, to those group of customers. Now I think we're getting pretty powerful. I think, I think the point is, guys, whether you like this type of thing or not, big data, predictive analytics are the, are the buzzwords around at the moment, it is changing the, uh, the, the way many of us think about our businesses. My question to you, I guess, is, you know, could something like this work in yours? So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It has been a pleasure speaking to you. Um, at Baycorp, we think predictive analytics, analytics will change our business. If you have any questions about this presentation or anything about Baycorp in general, feel free to come and join us at the stand. There is a uh, photogra photographer there who can do a LinkedIn shot for you as well. If you get it printed out, I might even sign it for you. Thank you very much. Thank you.